viewers, today we will be taking a look at how particle accelerators work. There are different types of particle accelerators which all have their own method for accelerating particles. We will be looking at linear accelerators since this video is part of the series on the Large Hadron Collider. The Large Hadron Collider is a linear accelerator but isn't straight. The term linear accelerator refers to the way the particles are accelerated rather than the shape of the actual accelerator. For those of you who are interested, there are also particle accelerators that use circular or rather spiral shaped paths. These accelerators are called cyclotrons. Linear accelerators use two types of fields, electric and magnetic. The electric fields are used to accelerate the particles, where the magnetic fields are used to keep the particles in the middle of the tube. First, let's take a look at the general setup. A linear particle accelerator uses a vacuum tube for the housing of the particles. At the start of this tube, we can find a particle generator. This is an electrical device that uses very high voltage discharges to create the particles we need. The particles travel from this device to the actual particle accelerator due to the attraction of an electrical field, but more on that later. Before we continue, you need to understand how a particle is accelerated in a linear particle accelerator. The particles we are accelerating are charged, which means that they are either positive or negative. If we place such a particle, for example a proton, which is positively charged, in an electrical field, the particle will move away from the positive and towards the negative side of the field. The higher the electrical potential difference between the sides of the field, the bigger the attraction is and therefore the higher the arrival speed of the particle. The problem with this is, of course, that there is a limit to the amount of electrical potential difference you can put between two plates before creating an electrical discharge. Instead, we're going to do it differently. The vacuum tube used in a linear particle accelerator is not just a tube. Inside the tube, we want to create electrical fields, which are made by creating an electrical potential difference between two objects, in this case plates. To avoid the particles hitting the plates, there is a small hole in the middle of the plates to let the particles through. Now all we need is a guidance system. We need to make sure the particles go through the holes in the plates. Obviously, the guidance system should not do anything to the particles except guide them through the holes in the plates. The guidance system is where the magnetic fields come in. Moving charged particles in a magnetic field experience a force perpendicular to their velocity vector as well as perpendicular to the magnetic field they are experiencing. The direction can be found using the right hand rule. For positive particles, you can find the direction of the force like this. When you hold out your right hand to form an L-shape, point your thumb in the direction of the velocity vector or travel direction and point your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. The force experienced by the particle comes out of your palm now. For negative particles, the thumb should point in the opposite direction of the velocity vector. So how can we make the particles follow a path without knowing where exactly they are? The answer is surprisingly simple. We create a magnetic field that is zero in the center and generates a big inward force the further the particles stray from the middle. With four magnets it looks like this. Notice that the particles that travel outside of the path in a diagonal direction will not meet the magnetic field and will therefore not be corrected. These particles will collide with the charge plates and will be lost to us. To reduce the loss we can make this magnetic field with more than four magnets. Making sure that the gaps in the magnetic fields are as small as possible. As a final note, I will go into a little more detail on the electric fields and how they accelerate the particles. As said before, particles are attracted to the side with the opposite charge of their own. There are, in fact, two forces at work. Not only does the particle get attracted by the oppositely charged plate, it also gets rejected by the similarly charged plate. For this reason, the tube is made up of chambers that have a positive plate on the one side and a negative plate on the other side. But what happens if the particle flies through the plate? 
If we assume a positively charged particle in chamber 1, it will enter chamber 2 without problems. When it arrives there, however, the particle will be attracted by the plate behind it and rejected by the plate in front of it. The forces generated by this would result in the particle slowing down, which is, obviously, not what we want. What we need to do here is switch the electrical fields exactly at the moment the particle is passing through the plate. That way, when it enters chamber 2, it will experience a positive plate behind it and a negative plate in front of it, just like it did in chamber 1. It will, therefore, be accelerated to chamber 3. And when it passes into chamber 3, the electrical field will once again be switched so the particle experiences the correct forces. Just as a side note to this, note that only one of every two chambers can have particles in it. The other chambers will slow down the particles. This slowing effect results in the particles eventually colliding with one of the plates. I hope you learned something today and I will see you next time.